Behold, the engineer is Angie here. What a funny joke! I love jokes! It is 4,000 fire gems, and you gotta be level 60. Not level 60. Skip grinding to level 60 with the engineer game pass. That's not really the problem. The problem is the gems. The hardcore rate of gems is so horrible, and the game itself sucks. You're, you're looking at about, for the average player, 40 plus hours to grind for this tower. These are all the upgrades of the engineer. We have here the level six and all the way down below, we have level one. She wields a giant nail gun, by the way, not a rail gun. And it's pretty funny the way it works. Every time she shoots, she'll um, leave in a nail gun inside them. And a new game mechanic is that uh, every damage she does, she'll build sentries with the scrap metal that she earns by dealing damage. And this is how she builds her sentries. At level zero, she can only build two sentries at a time. Also note that Commander nor DJ affects the sentry's range or, or fire rate. As you can see here, Engineer herself is being buffed. But the sentries, there's nothing going on for them. She can also detect stealth and also flying boys at the same time. Although the sentries do not detect stealth nor the flying units, she will only shoot them with her nail gun. Now with a level 5 engineer with the minigun sentry, she is able to solo bosses pretty well. With the sentry and engineer, we're looking at about 200 DPS for early on. Her nail gun itself is not that great. She has to rely on sentries to make it worthwhile. As the sentry upgrades go up, so does the scrap metal cost, but her damage goes up as well, so it's not that hard to grind for the War Machine sentries. And the War Machine sentries now have rocket pods on the top, dealing splash damage. Nice. Although a big con of this tower is that you can only place down six engineers despite uh, it being the most expensive tower in the game. But once you do get them all down, you can build up to a total of 24 War Machine sentries you can have placed down for doing pretty much almost a thousand DPS, if not 2,000 DPS I'm seeing here. It's hard to tell because the total damage is not affected by the sentry. But yeah, we just beamed 75 slow bosses easy. We're gonna try with a molten boss. Now the flaw of this tower is that any stun attack will instantly kill these sentries, which hinders the engineer pretty big, considering that that's his main DPS counterpart. The nail gun itself sucks. Multiboss barely walked out. We already dealt 20,000 damage. Remember, this is without Commander or DJ. 20,000 health, and there we go. The stunning killed everything. And not only is it stun, but now she has to rebuild all these sentries on the ground. But managed to recover, and Molten Boss dies. Now, Fallen King will just kill all your <laughs> kill everything as soon as it spawns in. But thanks to the big HP pool, it is not that hard to rebuild the sentries. But I mean, for 60s guys, that is really good. I disabled the tower limit to see how fast we could spawn kill with 24 engineers. All right, I'm gonna spawn in one molten boss while all these sentries are there. And man, look at the DPS. We're doing almost 10,000 DPS, but as soon as it stuns, it starts to go to crap. Um, I did use the stun free from the medic, but it won't revive the sentries, only on the stuns of tower. Now, with 24 engineers, which is what you can do normally if you have friends with it, uh, let's see how well it'll do. Man, the stunning really ruins this tower. So not even one for the map, and we already took away half his HP. Damn, dude. Oh, with the sword attack, it will kill the sentries around it, which is super annoying. It just murked about eight sentries right there. Man, look at all the splash damage you're doing. It's so broad, you can't tell what's going on. And with 24 engineers, yes, you can easily kill the Fallen King. No problem at all. Even with the Fallen Guardians in the way. We killed, we killed everything. <laughs> I'm gonna spawn in four hidden bosses to see how well the tower does. And it's doing an okay job, I guess. But if there's other zombies in the way, it wouldn't do this good. Okay, what about six engineers fitting this, huh? The max you can have at max upgrade. Oh, God. It's just barely, man. Barely. I can't say this is a good tower for self detection because it, it's not. It's just not. And for uh, lead balloons, this tower is 100% useless as it, it'll deal zero damage to it. Looks funny, though, with all the uh, nails stuck, <laughs> stuck inside them. 
So the pros and cons of this tower, the pros being is that it's pretty cheap for what it does in game, as in terms of uh, in game cost now. And then the pro is that it has flight detection and also self detection as well. And it doesn't need Commander or DJ to be good because it could do just as fine without those towers. However, the concert is that sentries do not detect stealth or flying units, which can cause you to lose a game in very situational contexts. Stunning one shots all the sentries it spawns in, and Engine will have to waste her time to rebuild all of that. Supports are also kind of a uh, comfort as well because, well, it would be nice to have that fire rate, dude. And another con being that it is too expensive. 4,000 Robux or 40 hours of gameplay. I don't like those stats. Uh, I have a lot of Robux, so it doesn't really matter to me. But is it worth that much amount or grinding all that time? No, it's not. Um, I would not consider this tower to be worth it at all because the cons are kind of big on this tower, especially for late game when the stunning starts to get super annoying. It's a cool tower and all, but I'm not sure if you guys should be exactly slaving away your life to try and unlock uh, this engineer tower. I have I have all these in engineers. I want to see if we can spawn kill the Fallen King. This is more than 24, by the way. Holy crap. I was about 50, damn it. I was about 50,000 DPS and it, and it just got destroyed. And even with all those engineers, we still took a while to kill the Fallen King. That's actually kind of disappointing. But yeah, guys, this tower is cool, but I wouldn't say it's worth uh, all that time spent grinding, which I think is uh, unfair. And um, the Robux for it, you're better off spending something else, I guess. Also, sorry if it sounds echoey, my voice. Uh, I just moved into my new house, and I haven't set up furniture nor soundproof walls, so... It's super echoey in the room because the sound just bounces around. So, uh, looking forward to doing a house tour video pretty soon. Uh, pretty excited to be here. I plan to do uh, more videos and work on my game a lot more. I can I can really focus in now. Now that now that I have my own place. So look forward to that, you guys. I will be doing another video talking about the update because I did a vote poll and 66% out of 44,000 votes said no, this update is not good. That's very concerning considering that this is one of the biggest events considering it has an entirely new path layout and, you know, things like that. But yeah, it is crazy to see these vote polls.